Hello and welcome to Road to C and welcome to the second part of my vlog series as I build up to my first century the Velo South on September 23rd. We've come out to the Mendips because uh, it's a nice place to train and <laughs> it's I've a bought, nice place to ride. A yeah. nice place to ride. And I've bought Dave, resident road CC Hello. expert in riding distances. What's yeah, this not at any great speed. <laughs> Which is what I'm just trying to get round. That's the main thing. So what's this ridiculous ride you're doing soon? I am doing the Brian Chapman Audit, a Brian Chapman Memorial Audex and on Saturday. How far is 600 that? 600 kilometres. That's a lot further than a century. That is a lot further than a century. So if you can um, do that, then I can do a century easy. Yeah. I would say that you can do a century easily. I mean, like the the trick with riding long distances is like you'd be you'd, you'd be able to go out tomorrow and ride a century as long as you didn't do it too quickly. As long as you pace yourself. I mean, pacing yourself is like the most fundamental aspect of it. If you kill yourself in like the first 20 miles trying to catch all the fast boys as they go off the start line like milk in the sun, then you know you'll kill yourself and you'll, you'll blow up after about half of it and it'll be purgatory the rest of the way around. So, I mean, the pacing aspect is is one thing you really need to get right. And it's hard on a big sport heat because everyone's really keen and there's lots of people and some of them are pretty quick. And I've been known to be competitive. You have been known to be competitive <laughs> in the past. So it's difficult to like rein that in, but it's really important to, to do that because having having the strength to complete it is all about making sure that you've got enough to keep you going all the way around. And that's that's probably like the first couple of sportives I did, that's the, that's the thing I struggled with the most, was like trying to stay with fast people that were much faster than me, and then just like blowing up and having to like crawl back. <laughs> <laughs> I still got around, but it wasn't much fun. And you, you know, to enjoy it, you wanna make sure that you've paced your efforts so you know that you've like given it all you given it all you've got, but you haven't like, you know, yeah. you haven't, haven't messed up your pacing and you haven't like fallen off at the end and like it's taken you an hour longer than it might have. So how do I go about feeding for an event like this? You saw me at time lapse where I bonked so hard in those far, final few hours where I couldn't get out of a chair uh -huh. and the only sa saviour was bacon and hash browns. Uh, so how do I go about eating while on a bike and um, not getting in the same position? Well, firstly, you make sure you find something that you can that you can eat that you know agrees with you. Because there's nothing worse than like trying to eat on the bike and getting stomach cramps and ending up being sick in the head. You know, I've, <laughs> I've done that a couple of times. It's any kind of fun. Um, so find something that works for you. That's that's one of the things. Like in in the training up to the event, that's one of the things that you really need to like focus on. Find things that work. Um, I've used gels in the past, which generally have been all right. I've, um, I've used stuff that I've cooked myself. I've got a book called Feed Zone Portables, which has got loads of stuff you can cook, like little omelets and rice cakes and pies and stuff. I find that really good because it's real food. Um, I really like Velo Forte bars, which are kind of uh, just a fruit and nut kind of bar. They're, they're again, all natural ingredients. I, they, I find that they, they work really well for me, but it's a case of what works for you. So it's a case of finding something and then making sure that you eat constantly through the ride. You don't have to eat much, mm -hmm. but it's good to just keep yourself topped up as you go through the ride. Um, if you look on gel wrappers, you'll see that they say, oh, you have, you have to take a gel every 20 minutes. You don't have to take a gel every 20 minutes. It's nonsense. But, you know, they have to sell gels. Yeah. So that's what they say. <laughs> it's like shampoos that say rinse and repeat, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but make sure that you're doing enough in terms of feeding to not get to that point where you just run out. And it happens more quickly than you think at the end as well. You don't notice it. You don't notice it creeping up. Suddenly you just go, oh, I don't have any energy left. <laughs> well, you know that feeling because you, yeah. you've been there. I've been We've there. We've all been there. But yeah, it's just like, have a strategy. Yeah. So think about what it is. So say every half hour, I'm going to have half of this bar or, you know, just make sure that you've, that you've got a strategy that you know. And like having a strategy and knowing it, psychologically is really helpful as well. Yeah. So I think I think a large part of this is going to be psychological and getting round rather than not being physically able to because okay I've not done a lot of it but I'd like to think of myself as reasonably fit and healthy and able to. I, I mean I don't think you'd have any trouble getting out and riding a hundred I mean we could go out and ride a hundred miles now. 
and you'd get around it fine. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think you have a problem in terms of the distance. I think if you want to like, if you want to feel like you've given a good account of yourself, yeah. it's just a case of making sure that you know how fast you think you can go, and you know what you're going to do when you're on the bike to make keep keep your energy levels up as well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is there any way to prepare myself for sitting in the saddle for all that amount of time and not the next day walking like a penguin? Um, comfort's, comfort's a really personal thing. So, I mean, I find that I don't ever really have big problems with saddle comfort. So even on, even on really long rides, and it's never like a saddle comfort issue for me. It's always... Um, it's, it's generally my back. I did, I did my back in a few years ago, so I have problems with, with my lower back. Uh, I have problems with my shoulders. Um, so there are, like for everybody, it's different. But I mean, try a few saddles, you know. You're in a privileged position of like being able to like go into the office yeah. and like pick one of 20 <laughs> that are in a box somewhere. So try a few, see what works for you. I mean, it may be that I find that the ones that are less like that are less padded that are the right shape are much more comfortable than the ones with more padding that don't work for me. So, so there's saddles, and also we've talked about we talked about before about whether your whether your bike will fit 28 tyres. I mean, I personally I race on 28s. I don't generally go below 28 for anything. I mean, I do on my bamboo bike because 28 <laughs> won't fit. But. Um, Generally, 28 is my, my all-round tyre, even my racing tyre now, and they're much more comfortable. And it's amazing how much, how much better they've become in the last few years. So if you can fit them, I would say fit them. Um, make sure that your gloves are padded in the right way that they're taking, taking the hit for you in, in the places where you feel it. I mean, gloves differ. You look at all the different patterns on them, and they do differ from glove to glove. I mean, I haven't got any padding on these at all, really, but they're OK. Um, but yeah, find ones, find ones that work for you. Again, shorts, it's a case of working out what works for you personally, finding finding ones that will work. Although you might have to represent and be in road CC gear, mate. And then you just have to stick with what we've got. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just, you've got, you've got a few months. So mm -hmm. just try a few things, you know, change your saddle, change the position of your saddle, see if it helps, like move it forwards and backwards, tilt it up and down just a little bit. See if there's people like, don't like tilting the saddle. People don't like you tilting the saddle, but if you look at any of my bikes, you'll see that it's angled slightly down because that is the most comfortable position for me because of the issues with my back and the way that it moves. I have to have it tilted slightly down so that it's comfortable. And if I don't do that after two hours, my back's killing me. And you can tell me like as many times as you like that it should be flat, but it clearly shouldn't be flat because what works for you is what works for you. And it's the same for everyone. You look at Yaroslav Kulravi, the uh, Olympic mountain bike world champion, his is at about 10 degree angle, because that's how it works for him. So, you know, do what, do what works for you. Try experiment with like different positions and you'll notice that some things work and some things don't, but you've got time to work that out. Cool, so we've donned the Road TC Argyle. We're in the yep. Mendits. We may as well go out and explore and do some training. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Okay, so that's the second part of this blog series and I've learned a few more things about riding long distances. The first of which is a cafe stop. So we're gonna stop and have some lunch now and then get back out on the bike. Uh, like this video if you do in fact like it. Subscribe to Road to Sea if you haven't done already. Drop any questions or comments in the comment section below and I'll uh, see you again next time. Cheers.